Hello, and welcome to this uh, short episode of the Always Improving Podcast, where we take questions from you know uh, players. Today, we're talking with tomorrow's goalkeeper, um, and we're going to take a question from a goalkeeper, obviously. Um, so, Sam, take it away. <laughs> um, so, I got this uh, message from a guy called Charlie. Um, hey, I started playing for a new team, but I'm not starting games. How do I become number one? Yeah. So, you know, short, simple to the point. Um, always yeah. like when I get messages like that. Um, so the, the one thing I'll, I'll just say like right off the bat is th this is kind of why I like, um, you know, having, uh, or being able to talk to a goalkeeper about, um, and, and someone who coaches goalkeepers as well about this stuff, because, um, obviously, uh, and I talk about this a lot. Goalkeeper is a very difficult position. It's a very unique position. And for most players who aren't starting, they'll probably still get minutes, especially like at the, at the youth level. Um, now you'd hope, uh, but like, you know, goalkeepers, you rarely sub out a goalkeeper. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and um, like, I, I can think like, if you're playing at a decent level, I can probably, you know, count on my, on my fingers, the times, uh, the numbers of times I've seen a goalkeeper subbed out, not for an injury reason. Right. Yeah. So, um, you know, it's, uh, it's, it can be very, very difficult. There are obviously a lot more goalkeepers out there than there are teams. So mm -hmm. you're going to be in this situation. Um, and yeah, it's just, uh, it's, it's really, really tough. The first thing that popped into my mind though, uh, was the same as I would tell any player, and that's, you have to improve. So, you know, the, the bet, like most of the time, um, every once in a while, coach will be a little bit unfair, but most of the time coaches play the players that give them the best chance to win games. Now yeah. at certain levels, I don't think that's the most important thing, obviously, but that's what a lot of coaches do. And that's what a lot of coaches think is the most important thing. So you have to improve. That's the, the number one thing is you just have to get better. And if you're good enough to start, you will start games. I, I completely agree. Um, there is one thing, and it's a little bit more off topic about, well, not off topic, but a little bit of a different perspective. Um, obviously, because there are so many goalkeepers for teams and all this kind of stuff, I actually think it's quite important as a goalkeeper, you learn to be a number two. Mm -hmm. um, again, in your career, let's say you play number one your entire life and then all of a sudden you become number two. You're not going to understand how to be that supportive number two. And being the second choice goalkeeper is a completely different role entirely compared to the starting goalkeeper. Uh, you know, you have to still be supportive. You still want to improve yourself. You still want to take that position. But again, you have to be there to support you know, it's a goalkeeper union. You want to be able to turn around and help that starting goalkeeper as much as possible as well. And being a goalkeeper in the goalkeeper kind of space, it's all about being very supportive for each other, but also wanting your own thing. And it's always about striking that fine balance. There are some phenomenal goalkeepers who are starting goalkeepers, who are amazing starting goalkeepers. But the second they become a second, they're awful because it's still all about them. You know, they're not trying to help the other people improve. They they should be helping me improve. Why am I helping them improve? So I think it's quite important to learn to be that number two, because especially when you get into your later part of your career, you're more likely to be a number two, maybe even a number three or number four. So to use these experiences now to learn these very vital things will also become very valuable to you later on. Because if, if you go from a smaller team where you're starting number one, and then you go to a higher level team and then all of a sudden you're the backup keeper. If you approach that in the wrong way and are not a very good number two, you're probably not going to last very long and not even get that chance to try and become the number one. Yeah, that that makes a lot of sense. And I'm, I'm a really big believer in, um, you know, the team always comes first. And it's, uh, I don't think that you'll get anywhere if you're one of those players. And, and I know this from experience because at, at certain points in my career, I was one of these players who was sitting on the bench, hoping my teammates would mess up because I wanted to, to be out there, but you really, and you know, it, nobody's perfect. You're going to have moments uh, like that. Like everyone does, but you need to kind of check yourself and be like, wait a second. I am part of this team and I am here to help the team succeed. And that means that 
you know, whether I'm playing or not, I need to want my teammates to succeed. I need to support them. I need to be there for them. And especially with a, you know, as a goalkeeper, I think that's a very, uh, it's, it can be kind of like a, um, an interesting relationship between the, the first choice goalkeeper and the second choice goalkeeper. Um, and I'm not saying it's easy to be a second choice goalkeeper, but at the same time, like you can't be like waiting, like, you know, Oh well, man, I hope he has a bad game today. Yeah. Um, you know, for, to get you, to get your chance. I just find that that sort of negativity, um, it's not good for you and it's mm-hmm. not good for the team either. So I, I do think trying to help, um, that first choice goalkeeper out is the most important thing. And then if you do that, they will also help you, right? There's probably a reason they're starting over you, but that doesn't mean that they can't help you improve. So you need to rock up to every team training session, you know, ready to go, maybe talk to that first choice goalkeeper. Can you do some sessions, you know, individually? Um, you know, what, what other sorts of training are you doing, uh, you know, on your own, are you in the gym? Are you, you know, or doing resistance training at home? Um, are you, uh, you know, maybe if confidence is a big issue, doing a little bit of meditation or something every day, like that's, that stuff, um, will help you as well. And that goes back to what I was saying about, um, you know, improving. And then one thing that I like, um, kind of like a, just a little change of perspective. If you are the second choice goalkeeper um, now, obviously, you know, you, you will get your chance at some point, but at the same time, what becomes the most important thing for you right now, team training sessions, you should treat your team training sessions as games, because Mm -hmm. what's, what's the difference when a, when a ball is flying at you, does it matter if, you know, it's a, it's a Saturday and there's, you know, uh, some people watching the game and there's a ref on the field and there's, you know, other, other players, like nothing really changes. That ball Mm -hmm. is still flying at you or, you know, you have to go claim it, uh, when the, when the corner kick comes in, like there's, there's not like a huge difference. So if you start taking the team training sessions, very, very seriously. And you have a couple of those a week, you might be training five, six, seven hours during the week, you miss out on an hour and a half, you know, 90 mm-hmm. minutes, or maybe not even 90 minutes at the weekend. Like that sucks. But I would take the seven hours during the week. Yes. Right. Exactly. 100%. And again, I, I think if you go into like team training with that kind of mindset, you also being number two can actually be quite beneficial for yourself and developing yourself as a player as all of a sudden you don't have that pressure on i need to just make saves i need to be perfect you in training you can go harder and you can also try different things if the goalkeeper that's ahead of you is a phenomenal shot stopper but they don't really like to sweep very much and you know that the team that you're playing for really wants to sweep he's going to be focusing on you know where the people, if there's a penalty, where they're going to take the shots and all this kind of stuff, all these extra stuff, you can then just work on improving yourself as a goalkeeper, maybe uh, for what the team needs you to be, or just finding out what your style of goalkeeping is. Because a lot of people try and shoehorn a lot of keepers into being like, let's say a sweeper keeper or a high line. Some aren't, and that's fine, but you need to work out what kind of keeper you are. And without that, added pressure of you have to start the weekend to be perfect and flawless because the goalkeepers you can actually develop a lot on yourself and again even if it's like the mental side of the game you know like if you find yourself very stressed out before a game or anything like that um, doing something like meditation and learning how to control those emotions can then help you when you do step up to being that number one but again I think it's when you've got that little bit extra time and you've and you're not starting the games. It's all about, yeah, like you said, train, 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 and work out what your weaknesses are in your game and then improve them. So then all of a sudden you get, give your coach no other option but to start you because you give them the best chance to win the game. Yeah. Uh, or, or maybe you're, you know, uh, a, a great uh, penalty saver or something. You're going to come in for shootouts yeah. or something. You know, and, yeah. A lot of, a lot of people like, um, don't don't really see like individual playing style when it comes to keepers which i like you know you look at uh, great keepers 
they they all have their own like little individual style um and you know you're probably not going to experiment as much like i hope that you feel comfortable in games to be able to experiment but obviously it's a lot easier at training um so that that's a really really good point is like you know if you're the the second choice uh you know keeper it's a time to like kind of think and recreate yourself a little bit. If you're, if you're not like the keeper that you think you should be right now, if you think like Mm -hmm. a different style, um, is for you, or you haven't quite found your style yet, um, you know, you, you need to find it and, you know, what better way than trying different things, um, you know, trying, trying to play in different ways. Um, and then the, the last thing that I'll just say is like, um, you know, we've already talked a little bit about patience, but patience is very, very important. All players, you know, need to wait for their opportunity. And like, it's not wait and do nothing. You're doing things in the meantime, but like, as you're working very, very hard, hard work never pays off right away. It pays off later on. Right. So don't, don't have this mindset of, oh, I've been working hard all week and I didn't start. No, you had to work hard for weeks and months and seasons. Um, And then also, you know, at at the same time, you, you need to be, you need to be ready when that chance comes, because it will come. Uh, It might come at a time that you don't expect it, but you know, every, every game that you, uh, you know, I remember when I was uh, playing and when I was, uh, you know, sitting on the bench a lot, um, it, it was tough to, to want to be ready every week. And then be ready and then not play. Um, but you need, but eventually your chance will come. And eventually my chance did come. And I'm so thankful that I got a good night's sleep before, had a good meal, you know, did my little pre match uh, ritual, even though I thought I wasn't going to play. And then I did play rather than, you know, screw it, I'm not going to play. I'm going to stay up all night, and, you know, playing yeah. video games or, um, you know, whatever it is. No, exactly. Cause then, that's the worst thing that could ever happen, especially as a goalkeeper. You might not get very many chances to prove that you should be starting or anything like that. And if you haven't done the preparation the night before, it's all about that discipline. Like, even if you don't think, especially as a goalkeeper, you're going to play, you still got to do it because you never know. And we, it's a horrible thing for a goalkeeper to get injured, but sometimes that's the only way you do get on. And you don't ever want that for your friends and your teammates or anything like that. But when you're then, called up to then step in to help the team at that moment you got to make sure you don't let anybody down and if you're almost very closed-minded and thinking about yourself like oh i'm not gonna play oh i'm gonna sit sit on the bench that's when all of a sudden you're gonna end up playing you're not gonna be ready and then everybody else is gonna be like oh this is why you're on the bench and you don't want to give them any of that ammunition to think that you want to come into the game perform well and be like I am still part of this team. I might not play very many minutes, but I'm still here with you. And when I'm called upon, I'll, you know, give my all for the team. Yeah, exactly. It's all, you know, all about, you know, supporting the team. And I think by supporting the team, that's how, that's how you succeed in a team sport. It's, uh, you know, if, if you, I think the best way to succeed as a player is to help your team succeed coaches notice that other players notice that, um, you know, and, and you can do that no matter what your role is on the team. Uh, I, I honestly believe that 100%. All right. Um, so thanks for, uh, thanks for listening to this, uh, episode of the always improving, uh, podcast. Um, I'll put links to tomorrow's goalkeepers, uh, social media in the, in the description. Um, and yeah, thanks. Thank you. (laughs) All right. Peace.